everyone. So today we're going to be talking about a mole. So a mole is basically a nice blind furry little mammal and they can actually dig up to 18 feet for every hour and this is what a mole looks like. So they're nice little hairy, they're used to living in tunnels and they basically are diggers and live underground. But unfortunately that's not the kind of mole we're actually going to really talk about. We're going to talk about a different type, a much less adorable one that we use in chemistry. So the one that we're going to talk about is actually a counting number. Yes, it is not an animal. It is, in fact, a number. So the mole is something similar to what a pair would represent, or a dozen, or a ream, where one pair represents two of something, one dozen represents 12 of something, a ream would be 500. Well, one mole represents this number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This number is known as Avogadro's number. And the mole is really just the chemistry version of what a pair or a dozen would be. Okay, so it's really not that much different, but it's something unfamiliar because of the fact that we're dealing with a massive number here that we're not really used to dealing with in our everyday lives. So then why exactly do we use the mole? Well, that's because of the fact that elements on the periodic table have different masses. So if we're trying to compare different elements on the periodic table, then we have to keep in mind that just going based on the masses may not always be the right way to go because they will have different masses. Uh, additionally, atoms are tiny. Atoms are really, 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 really small particles, and because of that, they usually appear in very, very large quantities. So the mole basically helps to count atoms. So we can use the mole to compare elements and we can also compare the quantity of atoms here. Now we can only compare the mass of elements if they have the same number of atoms. Think of it as if you were comparing a dozen bowling balls to a dozen marbles. You still have a dozen of each, so you have the same quantity of each. But if I was going purely on their mass, you know, five pounds of bowling balls will be completely different and much less than five pounds of marbles. Hence why we use something to kind of equal it out this time, instead of using a dozen, we're going to use a mole because it's just a bigger number. So when we talk about the mole, we want to address the molar mass. So first off, we want to talk about how the molar mass is different than an atomic mass and exactly how do you calculate the molar mass of a compound because we are talking about elements and atoms here. So the molar mass is basically the mass if I have one mole of anything. So if I have one mole of something, whatever that mass is, we call it the molar mass. Now, the mole is used to represent particles, and the particles will have different terms depending on what the, exactly the substance is. So this is mainly just for the proper way to kind of like label things here. Atoms are used strictly for elements. Molecules are for the covalent bonded compounds, and formula units are what we use for ionic compounds. And when we talk about molar mass of elements, they're basically whatever the mass listed on the periodic table is going to be. So the difference between this and the atomic mass is that the atomic mass, you can see the word atom here, that's the mass of just one atom of any element. While the molar mass is if I have one mole of that substance. So the mass of one, L, uh, one atom of anything takes on the AMU unit, that's atomic mass. But if I have one mole of it, then that mass changes to molar mass. You can see here the comparison of sodium. If I have just one atom of sodium, we call that the atomic mass of sodium. But if I have a mole of sodium atoms, then we give it a mass, so in grams, that would be the molar mass. The unit for molar mass is given as grams per mole because it is the mass or the grams in one mole of the substance. So if we're finding the molar mass of compounds, it is really just as easy as what elements make it up, how many atoms of each element are present, and we are just summing them together. Because it is a compound, the compound of the combination of the different atoms of every element. So if we take a look at H2O here, hydrogen, just looking at the periodic table, has a mass of 1.01 .01 grams per mole. Because now we're dealing with molar mass, no more AMU. Well, in H2O, I have two hydrogens. So if one hydrogen, one mole of that is 1.01 .01 grams, 
and I've got two of those. So my hydrogen contributes a mass of 2.02 .02 grams per mole. Oxygen has a mass of 15.99996, but we could basically just round that to 16 grams per mole. So the sum of H2O would be the sum of two hydrogens and one oxygen, 18.02 grams per mole. Nice and easy.